Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Michael Robinson. I'm an associate professor of biology at Barry University. That's not me. That's me, but uh, it's to save space on the screen. I'm not going to show my face during these videos so that I can have more space to provide you information. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through what I have given in the past and will give again in the near future as an informational webinar about our Craft Scholars program. So some of this is material you might have already seen previously if you've been to one of our webinars or maybe you'll see it again in the future if you attend one of our upcoming webinars. But here's a QR code. The QR code can take you directly to our website. Here in the bottom right is an email where you can send questions about the program. So if there's anything that's unclear, any questions that you might have following up these videos, please feel free to send an email to that address. So what I've done is I'm going to break the content up into separate videos where each video will have one relevant chunk of information so that way you can sit and you can watch them all in series or you can watch them one by one or you can jump around as you need okay and I'm going to start and end each video with this slide just as a reminder of how you can get some more information but without further ado let's jump into the content so this first video is going to be just an introduction to the Craft Scholars Program. Okay, what is it? Not the details about what will happen during it, but what is the idea behind it and why it might interest you. So I'm going to say this right up front. Right, I am a parent. I have a student in college. I have another one who's just about to start college. I know about how the cost of college can be a significant factor. I'm just going to point this out here. I'll talk more about it later. But one of the major benefits of the Craft Scholars Program is a very substantial scholarship. Again, I'll talk about that later, but hopefully that will keep you interested and listening throughout these videos. Now, I'm not going to say anything about the eligibility yet. That will come in a later video, but I'm just putting it here. These are the eligible majors. These are the criteria for students that are eligible. If you want, you can pause it and look through them. But I want to get into more the the reasons behind this program, and we'll talk about those in a little more detail later. This is our Craft Scholars website. I will talk a little bit more about this in a different video. But at this moment, I wanted to just scroll down and show you that we have an upcoming webinar January 9th you can sign up for that most of the content is going to be exactly the same and to what's in these videos here but you have the benefit of being able to ask questions of me directly or other faculty or students or other administrators who are going to be involved and then on Saturday January 20th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on campus we have a specialty tour so you can come to campus, tour the campus, see the facilities on campus, and then the Craft Scholars Program will have a specialty tour where you'll meet with faculty and we will um, take you around, show you some of the options or some of the, the benefits of the program. And uh, so regardless of what your major might be, if you're interested in the Craft Scholars Program, there will be faculty involved with the Craft Scholars Program there to to speak with. So briefly, what the Craft Scholars Program is, it's a collaboration between Barry University with the University of Florida and the USDA, specifically their National Institute of Food and Agriculture. What we are interested in is helping students develop these tools and the skills and the interest to tackle problems that are covered by the interests of NIFA, the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Now, 
who is NIFA? There's you can go online and check out NIFA. If you think about food and agriculture, a lot of times you're probably thinking about farming and things like that. But NIFA is involved in food from when it's produced to when it gets on the table and everything in between. So if there's something related to food, NIFA is involved. And this is just a few of the icons I, I took from their website that shows a variety of the things that they're interested in. So don't think that this program is only for students who are interested in agriculture or farming. That could be a major part of it, right? But you might not be interested in that at all. You might be interested in other aspects of, um, of society, right? Other things that are important. Let me just tell you a few. So, yes, NIFA is interested in farming and ranching, okay? But that includes other things like aquaculture, right? Maybe you're interested in marine biology. You could be interested in aquaculture as a very important way to feed people. Maybe you're interested in animal care. Pre-veterinary students would benefit from this program immensely, right? Learning how to care for animals, or just maybe you're interested in the study of animals, right? So there are many, many species of animals that are, we don't necessarily eat, but that are important for our food systems. Insects is one obvious example because they are pollinators, but they also will eat up our crops. Maybe you're interested in the environment, right? Climate change or how farms and agriculture interact with ecosystems. Maybe you're interested in the environment and restoration ecology, something like that. So caring for, these are researchers who are putting clams back out into the Indian River Lagoon to try to restore the clam uh, populations there. But NIFA is involved in all kinds of things from forestry to soil, water. The USDA also administers SNAP. And if you're unfamiliar with SNAP, SNAP is the single most important way that we get food to people who are facing food insecurity. And during COVID, almost 25% of the United States received some SNAP benefits. So this was crucial to making sure people got the food they needed. So you might be interested more in the sociological side of things. And that's where this would play out, right? Here's a map from a, a study done looking at food deserts. These are areas where there is food insecurity. It's difficult for people to access regular healthy diets. That's a lot of the United States covered by food deserts. Maybe you want to solve these problems in a variety of ways. One way could be bringing food literally to people who need it. Another way is urban gardening. We have a big project that is going to, I'm going to discuss in another video, but it deals a lot with urban gardening, which is growing food in urban centers close to where people are. Maybe you're more interested in education. So NIFA is interested in educating people on good nutrition. Right? Maybe you're a, a more of a technologically minded person. You like computers or math. Technology is increasingly important on all ends of agriculture. So determining where you're going to water or apply pesticides in a field using advanced technologies or on the other end of it to using computer systems to predict where we can best distribute food to help the most people most efficiently. So there's a place, if you are interested in solving problems, there is a place for you in NIFA. Maybe you're interested in more of the law enforcement side of things. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has its own Office of Investigations where they investigate all kinds of criminal activity. That's just a brief taste of all of the things that NIFA and the USDA and craft scholars can be 
involved with. But there's lots of other things that I didn't touch on simply because of the time that we have available to us. But I encourage you, go to the NIFA website, check it out, and see what they're involved with. But in short, these things that we've identified are problems. What are we interested in? We're interested in solving problems. Science is about solving problems. Those problems could be increasing crop yields. Those problems could be getting more nutritious food to the right people in the right places. They cover a very broad spectrum. They could be local problems. They could be global problems. If you are interested in solving some of these problems, you should consider applying to Craft Scholars. So that's it for this video. I'll take it up uh, with some more details about the Craft Scholars program, what it entails exactly, in the next video. And as always, here's our QR code that will lead you to our website and there's an email that you can write to if you have further questions. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.